without your goodness I would be desperate without your love slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross and you have won me with your kindness chase me down when I was lost and where Church, let's sing this truth together. He's a God of hope and peace. Let's sing this. Peace, I bring it all the peace. A storm surrounding me, let it break out of your name still. And call the sea to still, the rage in me to still every way. The darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, silence fear, oh Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Oh. Call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing. Yeah, I will praise on oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. It's silence, fear, oh Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, sing it again, Jesus. Silence, fear, oh, 
guys so we are about to get started on our new series called space to talk and before we go uh too far into this message i'm gonna pause and pray for us really quick so bow with me uh god i just thank you for today lord i thank you for who you are and that you even created a space that we can have conversations um with our peers and with leaders god i pray over this talk tonight god that it would be uh, received well i pray that you would speak through me as I give this message, Lord, in that uh, anything that I say that isn't true or isn't honoring to you, God, would fall on deaf ears. May they not remember it once the video stops playing. God, I pray um, ultimately that you're glorified and that you are made known in the lives of these students, Lord. So uh, be with us. I pray against distraction. I pray against the enemy. And I pray that we are getting to meet all together on Sunday, uh, Lord. But we trust you. We love you. It's your name I pray. Amen. Hey guys, like I just said, we're going to be starting our new series called Space to Talk this week. Um, as we are diving into these topics of mental health and different different things that we've all had conversations about at some point or another, I'm confident, we want to create a space that you can have conversations with people that are trustworthy and that love the Lord. So those are your leaders and those are your peers. And that's Derek and that's me. And so many of us that have walked through different experiences like this, man, know that the people that you surround yourself with in these situations with these conversations matter a ton. So please know that this is the time to bring up those conversations, to ask those questions and say the things that might not be easy to say. Um, because number one, your leaders care. And number two, this is a great place to do that. So with that being said, we are going to dive in. And tonight we're going to be talking about anxiety and depression, right? And so mental health is a super big buzzword, buzz topic in uh, the world right now, and especially in the, in the Christian world. And I'm sure you guys hear about it at school a ton. So we're going to talk about uh, what those things are exactly, right? So we're going we're gonna to define depression. We're going to define anxiety. Um, and then we're going to talk about practical steps to combat them, how to fight them. Because uh, it wouldn't do much good to just tell you guys what they are and leave you wondering, well, now what? Um, so before we uh, talk more about them, we're going to read just one of the many passages of, of scripture that, that deals with this issue. So I'm going to have you guys pause the video and read Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 31, um, and, and verse 34 following that. Awesome. So as you guys just read, we are going to dive in. We're going to first talk about depression, right? So like I said, these are some buzzwords that you hear all the time, right? I, all the time. It's like, man, I had a hard day. Like, I think I'm depressed. And so let's, def let's define what that is before we, before we get carried away. Um, the American Psychological Association describes depression um, as a lack of interest and pleasure in daily activities, significant weight loss or gain, insomnia or excessive sleeping, lack of energy, inability to concentrate, and feelings of worthlessness or excessive guilt, and recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. So that is like a pretty intense, pretty heavy definition. Uh, and those are just some of the things that they describe to characterize depression. But uh, one thing that I want to note right now, so I need everyone to like lock in for just a second. Depression is not the same thing as being sad, right? There, There is a difference there. And so, something also to note is depression is diagnosed by a professional. <laughs> it is not diagnosed by a friend that has walked through it. Even if, if they have been diagnosed with depression and they're like, hey, my symptoms looked a lot like that, right? They might they might be, and you, in the, there very well could be some overlap there. But the, the big thing there is depression is for sure something that a professional will diagnose. Um, I think a lot of times, like I said, in, in our culture, we are really quick to be like, man, I just feel sad. Or like, man, my I, 
been a hard couple weeks. Like I'm having a hard time getting out of bed. I think I'm depressed. And you, you might be, and we are going to talk about what to do with when you get to that point. Um, but there's a whole nother realm of feelings outside of depression, um, that you might be experiencing too. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to define anxiety. The same association, so American Psychological Association, their website defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure, right? So they also listed um, a few more physical symptoms such as sweating, trembling, dizziness, or rapid heartbeat. Um, and again, anxiety, it's one of those buzzwords. We love to, we love to say it. Um, we, we hear it often. Um, but there is a difference between having anxiety, struggling with anxiety, and being worried. If you're about to go take a test that you haven't studied for and your heart's racing a little bit, like that's that's a little bit of worry right there. That that's not long term. You're struggling with anxiety. That's like, man, I didn't prepare and now I'm panicking a little bit. And so I want us to to be aware of that difference and I want us to be able to recognize that in ourselves and and maybe in one another, right? So if if you have a friend that uh, is watching Criminal Minds every night before they go to bed and they're having really bad nightmares and they're really anxious about their sleep really feeling worried, there might be something more to the fact that they're watching Criminal Minds than the fact that they struggle with anxiety. Um, and again, this is not me saying that they don't have anxiety. I just want us to see the, the full big picture here and not just stop at those words that we are really quick to label things with, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to actually share with you guys a little bit about my struggle with anxiety, what that's looks like in my life. Um, it's something I, I started struggling with in college, really, is, is when I realized it. Um, and I didn't actually seek help for it until uh, probably two years ago, actually. And, and it got to this point where it was waking me up in the middle of the night. And so around two or three in the morning, I would just be like woke, aggressively woken up by, by panic. My heart, would be through, my heart rate would be like through the roof. Um, I'd be sweating and, and I would have a hard time breathing, right? It would feel like there was an elephant on my chest. And so um, I, I realized at that point, like, okay, this is, this is not normal and this isn't okay. And so I actually sought counseling and, and I, I went and saw a counselor and she helped me a ton. And that whole season was, that was wild. Um, I was like struggling with the food because my body was just freaking out about a lot of things. And so food just felt like another daunting issue. And then uh, I would spend all day long being so worried about, hey, am I going to be able to sleep tonight? Or am I, am I going to wake up with a panic attack? What can I do today? How can I be in control of the situation and work really, really hard and run really fast um, and wear myself out so tonight I'll be able to sleep, right? And in that season, I found myself trying to take control myself. I found myself saying, okay, let me be really, really tired so I can sleep or let me just do everything I can or stay up late and not even like give into that. Um, and I was really quick to run to what I, what I thought I should do instead of running to what I knew I should do. And, and that's consult the word, right? And so me getting into counseling, that's one of the first things my counselor talked to me about was, hey, get into the word. That, that is going to be a huge, huge step. Um, and hear me say right now that anxiety and depression are real. I'm not telling, what I'm not saying is that, hey, if you're feeling anxious and depressed, all you have to do is pray, right? I, I don't want you to hear that message, but I do want you to hear that it is necessary and it is important and that is going to be one of our, our big practical, tangible steps that we can take in that struggle. Um, the bottom line is, is we live in a broken world, right? So God created the world to be perfect. Um, sin entered the picture and, and that, that picture was broken, right? And, and forever marked by sin until Jesus comes back, right? And so... Um, anxiety and depression are just a result of that brokenness. And so I think uh, in, in the midst of that struggle with anxiety, I also struggled with this, uh, a little bit of an identity crisis, I guess, where I, I thought, man, am I not a Christian? Like, do I not love the Lord because I'm not anxious or because I am anxious, right? It tells us in scripture, like, don't be anxious about anything. And, and I was so confused because I was like, why, like, why is this happening? Um, but even in the, that passage that we read, it, it says, Hey, don't be anxious because the Lord cares. Like it doesn't say, Hey, don't be anxious. It's like, Hey, don't be anxious because you can trust our God. Right? So I, I really want to make sure you guys hear that. Like write that, write that, those verses that we read tonight, write those down, keep those by your bed, whatever you got to do, like keep that with you. Um, now that we've talked about what depression and what anxiety are a little bit, I want to talk to you about what, what we should do with those feelings, those thoughts, those problems. Um, and I know there's probably some of you that are listening to this and you're like, okay, well, Brittany, like, thank you for sharing. Um, that's great. I've heard this, this verse, these verses before, but 
I just don't struggle with this. Like this just is not my story. And I want to grab you by the shoulders and shake you and say, please, please listen, because I guarantee you at some point in your life, someone you care very deeply about or yourself will walk through something like this, right? And so this doesn't have to be happening in your life right now for it to matter. And, and I pray that that's true. Like I pray that you would pay attention just for the sake of being able to maybe better counsel someone through this as opposed to just being like, hey man, that stinks, I'm sorry, right? Um, and so as we're, as we're walking through these steps, like everyone locked in, um, here's, a, here's a few things that I have seen help me and that like, as I've seen, like sought out help professionally, my, my counselors have said, and um, first and foremost, guys, memorize scripture, right? So the number one thing that is going to help you like get out of your head or has helped me get out of my head is, is memorizing scripture. I call these fighting verses. Um, that's what someone else has called them for me. And so it's just stuck. Uh, and ironically, my first ever fighting verse, the first ever verse I memorized to fight lies uh, was Matthew 6, 34, which we just read, right? And it says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. itself. Each day has enough worries of its own. And um, just as a reminder of like, hey, the Lord's got it, right? And so memorize those verses. And in those moments when you're like, man, I'm feeling worried, I'm feeling panicked, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to go through the cycle of thoughts that, that are taking my mind captive, like, hey, stop right there and recite that scripture, right? Memorizing scripture is going to be a huge asset in this, in this, in this struggle. Um, another thing that will be helpful, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is identifying the trigger, identifying the root. If you're doing things that you're like, man, every single time, I get in bed and I turn on criminal minds, my heart starts racing or like I can't sleep. Man, find that trigger and cut it out if you can. If it's something you're doing on on purpose or intentionally or even unintentionally and you have control over that, man, get that out, right? If it's like, hey, I wait till the night before to study for my test and I don't sleep, so it makes me it makes me feel anxious, study earlier, make a plan, right? So identifying that trigger and that root is gonna be super, super helpful um, for you. And then as you're identifying your, your root of the issue there, um, putting language uh, in, to your feelings beyond just like anx anxious and depressed, right? Like I said earlier, man, there are, there are a whole spectrum of feelings. And I think we're, we automatically just go like, oh, I'm kind of feeling down. I have to be depressed. Or, hey, I'm, my heart's racing a little bit. I'm a little nervous. Like it has to be anxiety. And so something that would be really helpful maybe is, is, um, and I actually had a, a really good friend of mine do this and, and suggested the same to me, was every day when she walked through a season of depression, she wrote down um, five feelings she had, had experienced that day. So it wasn't just like, hey, overall, like I am, I'm sad, I'm struggling, and I, I feel a little bit worthless. It was like, hey, this morning, my friend brought me coffee and I felt grateful, right? So every single day she had a track of like, these are five things I felt beyond just this like overcast of gloom um, and worthlessness that she was battling. Right, and so um, it helps us to understand that there are things that we feel beyond those two uh, strong, polarizing buzzwords. Um, and then another thing, and for all of you that are like Brittany, this still doesn't really apply to me. This is really important. Um, encourage, uh, encourage your peers, and then also if if it's you, I encourage you, I implore you, talk to people about it. Talk to someone that isn't your age, talk to someone that is a little bit older than you, that's trustworthy and that loves the Lord, man, they are going to be your greatest asset in, in this situation and navigating it. So if that's your parents, man, that is awesome. Bring your parents in on this. If you're like, man, I don't know how to go to my parents with this. I want to talk to my life group leaders first. Please talk to your life group leaders. Don't leave this conversation tonight with anything left unsaid in the realm of anxiety and depression, because that would be such a miss. And I can guarantee you, your life group leaders want to know what's going on. And absolute worst case scenario, man, if, they, if they're like, man, I don't know what to do with this, but can I please pray with you? What else could you, like, that, that's like the ultimate win, I think, is, is if we could all bear each other's burdens and one another's burdens in love, Galatians 6, 2, right? If we could just come alongside one another and say, hey, I don't know how best to navigate this, but let's take this to the Lord together. That is awesome. And so, um, guys, I, again, I'm, I'm going to say like, I am so excited for the series. I'm really excited for the conversations to follow. And I pray that you are honest and real with your leaders and with one another. Don't just sit in this and don't just let your friends sit in this, right? Take this to people you trust and really, really get ready to fight these, these struggles, man. Um, and we get to know that our kingdom is, is in heaven and, and it's not here. This is not eternity and, and we have so much more to look forward to. So I'm going to dismiss you guys. Um, Y'all are going to head off into discussion time. Please, 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 please take advantage of this time together. Uh, let me pray and I will send you on your way.
God, thank you for who you are. God, I thank you that you care for us. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you love each and every one of these students um, far more than we ever could. God, that you knew before the beginning of time that they would be sitting in these rooms, in these houses, in these yards, wherever this this is happening tonight, God, um, hearing this message, Lord, I pray that you would go before and that you would deliver this message in their hearts way better than I can, God. I, I thank you that you care uh, and that you love us, God, and that you give us your word to, to fight um, the sin of the world with. Lord, we love you. It's your name I pray. Amen. See you guys. It's easy to find a teacher to tell you what you want. And you got to ask yourself, am I just trying to find someone to tell me what I want to hear, or do I really want truth, even if that truth leads me away from my own desires? Questions about sex, sexuality, and gender, these have become the most pressing ethical questions facing the church today. And our youth especially, they're swimming in the deep end of these topics. It's said that the more religious a family is, the less likely they are to talk about sex in the home. Regardless of whether you identify as male, female, trans, non-binary, or anything else, we need to make sure that our ultimate identity is in Jesus. Don't let your past mistakes define you or your future. Every day is a new chance, a new opportunity to make a choice to follow Jesus and live your life with sexual integrity.